Okay, guys, this is pretty epic. Today, I'm going to be showing you how you can create a crawling plugin and actually also use it when you're flying. And of course, as you guessed it, you can even crawl through and underneath blocks just like this one, and then you can disable crawling by hitting shift. Before we start coding, I want to explain you why things work. Remember, it is better if you understand the code deeply than just watching a YouTube tutorial and copy pasting it blindly. So, to make the player right here go into crawl mode right here is basically just forcing player to swim. This is a new feature from Minecraft 1.14 and the way we're going to do this is by creating, setting the player to be animated into the swimming mode. Now the problem with this one, if you call player dot set swimming, which is the method responsible for putting player into crawling mode or swimming mode, this method will be reversed by bucket in the next tick. To learn more about ticks, please refer back to the very first video in this tutorial series that I made. Now, to, to, to make sure that Bucket does not revert the player from swimming mode back to standing, we have to place a fake barrier block, this is this X right here, above the player, and we have to listen to player moving around, and then we have to automatically move the block above the player such that the player cannot stand, because inside your client, you are actually going to be seeing an invisible barrier block above you. So in the game, if I look up while crawling, we can see that there is a barrier block on top of the player, preventing the player from standing up. And if we're going to move, can see that the bar barrier block will be moved automatically to position itself directly above the player. Now, in the code itself, we're going to be creating one command, and I already did create a baseline, a skeleton of this command. It's simple crawl command right here. Make sure to implement it just as you see on the screen. Again, if you need help creating commands, we have a video in this free Minecraft tutorial series just dealing with commands. Please go ahead and watch that one first. Also, make sure to register the command in your plugin.yml file. I simply did it right here. And also make sure to register the command inside your on enable method. Likewise, we're going to be needing a listener. Again, if you need to rehearse back about game events, we have a free Minecraft tutorial video called Game Events. I think it's the third video in this free tutorial series. Please go back to it if you need to. Now also make sure to register this listener. And I simply placed this right here inside my main on enable method. Now what I found creating this functionality is we need a model class right here. I can actually make it final. This will be a simple class storing the crawling players to make sure that we can track them and position the barrier block easily. And now what I can do is I can make a map right here, storing the player's unique ID and the crawl class instance, because this class will be doing a little bit more. And it's nice to have a model class inside the map instead of just having, say, a set of crawling players, because then we would have to have more code. And I think the design of this code will be more beautiful if we can store the entire instance. You're going, you're going to see this in a minute. I've also created two methods to find the player from unique ID and the player itself, as well as a pub private static final block data holding the block data for the barrier. This is because we're going to be sending the fake packet for the player such that the player thinks that there is a barrier ahead of them and to save performance we can pre-create the black data beforehand so that each time we're going to be moving the barrier we don't have to recreate it again now inside this class we're going to be obviously storing a player and also the current barrier location this one is not final because we're going to be updating it as the player moves now it's time to create a constructor this one is very obvious however what we can also do, we can actually start the logic inside the constructor simply because I found this design to be the fastest. I don't want you guys to have a huge code that you don't understand. This one is the fastest design. So what we can do, we can get the player and we can set the player to actually be swimming. As I explained to you, this is not going to work because in the next tick, Bucket is going to set this to false, so we have to do something extra right here. And for this reason, we can cr create an update method right here, call it right after we set the player to swimming to prevent Bucket from setting it to false. And the final part of the constructor, simply put this, this instance inside the map. Now what I can do, I can create a static method right here, called start, such that this will create a new instance for the player. And actually for the best design, we can set the, the constructor to private so, so that the only way to start crawling for a given player is to call the start method. 
and we're also going to need the location of the barrier as a getter because inside our listener we're going to be dealing with it now let's implement a method called update barrier location remember when the player is moving we need to set the location to a new place so update barrier location is very simple all we have to do is update it right here and then send the player a packet which is called send block change luckily thank god we don't have to deal with nms because bucket already provides us an easy way how to send a fake packet i think i covered a little bit about packets in the nms and packets video you can check that out we also have a specific video about packets dealing with protocol lib you can also check that out completely for free that's why i want you guys to subscribe to this channel because we have a lot of great videos coming now in this one it's, it's literally as easy as getting the location and then sending the barrier data which will render a fake barrier on top of the player no one else except the this player right here for which this instance is working will see that so other players will not see anything and of course we also need a method to remove the barrier this one is only private because i found throughout my coding we don't need to call it from any other place now this one is a bit tricky because we have to check if the barrier location has been set sometimes it will not be set as i'll explain later and then we simply have to send the player for the barrier location and we need to actually get the original block which is there because this one is only a fake packet we're not actually editing the map in any way so we're going to get the original block at the given map location and then get the original block data such that such as the client will then see the original block on top of it after this method is called now also don't forget to set the barrier location to null to null the field and we also need one other method called stop which is going to be public right here and this one is very simple all we have to do is first of all set the player not to be swimming anymore and then we have to destroy the barrier block and finally we ha just have to delete the player from our map that we made earlier now it's time to finish this class by implementing the updating method all we have to do is get the block above the current location using get block get relative block face up and then simply updating the location however i found through rigorous testing that if we just call block above get location it will actually block player from moving underneath such that we have to rely on the location itself and then we have to add uh, a little bit more than just one block and i found 1.5 to be the sweet spot i know it doesn't make any human sense but apparently if i just call the block above right here it's not gonna work because i don't know why some weird bucket bug but if i add 1.5 which is around right here because this one is one this one is half then it'll position the barrier block properly now if the, if the blocks type is actually solid we don't have to update the barrier in this case we can just destroy it and it's a good practice to always destroy the barrier first before moving it so that you prevent glitches and you prevent prevent visual artifacts so we're just gonna call this destroy barrier and then only if we need to place the new barrier we're going to be doing it right here now this will obviously produce a lot of unwanted calls and waste a lot of performance so that we're only going to be calling this entire block if the barrier location has not been set this means that we're calling it right here such that this is the first call ever or the block above has changed so that when the barrier block is equal to the above block which means the player hasn't moved or he only moved a little bit but he's still below he's still below that barrier block we don't have to waste any performance and we're not going to update it we're only going to update it when the player has sort of moved uh underneath another full block which will then return another um another block right here which is going to call this code thank god we have moved past the first stage of this training tutorial next up is the listener now in this class there's just going to be four events number one on toggle swim that will simply prevent players from disabling the swimming such that every single time bucket will try to stop swimming we're going to say no the other event is actually a little bit heavier on performance so make sure to stick to the very end of this video because i'm going to be discussing what to do to improve it this one will obviously track player movement and then update the barrier block once we have moved the third event on click will actually fix another bucket bug because it so happens when i look up and i click the barrier block it actually disappears so we have to send the, pa the packet again otherwise you'll experience more visual glitches and artifacts 
And the final event is just optional. You don't have to have it. This one will simply listen to player trying to sneak and then disable crawling, such as providing easy way for players to exit crawling. And I've also managed to add ignore cancel to true to all four events, such as when a plugin comes before us and cancels the event, preventing this interaction, we're not going to be causing any conflicts. Now, the first event is extremely simple. All you have to do is call crawl that find the player by event, get entity, get the unique ID. Notice that we have to get the entity right here because this one is not only called for players, this is called for any mob apparently. And so, you know, don't worry about checking if, if the entity is a player because if the unique ID is not in a map, it's not gonna work. And then if we have a valid player that is trying to uh, disable or enable swimming, we already know that the player is swimming, so we have to simply cancel the event. And the next extremely ridiculously easy event to listen to is simply to disable this, the, the crawling mechanism. We're going to get the player right here and then find the crawling instance of the player. And if the player is in, in fact crawling and we are sneaking, that means we're not unsneaking, but we're pressing the, the shift or whatever button you have to sneak, then we're simply going to call crawl that stop right here. Now, inside of the on move event, I'm going to simply copy the crawl from this one, and I can actually also copy the player right here. And then if we're crawling, I am going to get the from location that we're moving from, as well as the to location we're moving to. And I have to do a lot of manual validation such that when we the X is not the same, so we have moved the whole block and the Y is not the same, so we have jumped up and down the whole block and the Z is not the same, so we have moved in a different two dimensional way, right? Then we're simply going to not call the crawl that stop. Sorry about this, my AI is messing this up. We're going to be ne needing to call the from the location, but also we need to clone it. What happens if we don't clone it? Well, inside the update right here, we're actually adding this 1.5 to the location. And the way that that event works is that, um, well, the, the way that this method works add right here, if you open it, this will actually change the location itself. And I believe that bucket, what bucket does, if we didn't clone it, then we would actually change the uh, teleportation, the movement itself, and then you would experience a bump 1.5 block above, which is obviously ridiculous. So we need to make sure that we don't update the location in the event we create a clone, a new instance of it, and then we simply operate on, on that new instance with the barrier block. Great, and the final event on a click right here, I also believe I can just copy these two from below right here, and then if crawl is not null, we also have to get the clicked block, just like this one, and the clicked block is not null, and the click blocks location equals to the barrier location, then simply means we have to send the fake packet to prevent the spigot bug. So we have to simply call crawl that update. And then we also need to cancel the event. That obviously means that the player will not be able to destroy barriers even in creative mode. Alrighty, we're done. Let's go inside the command right here and let's simply call crawl dot start for the player, which we can now cast to the player itself because we know that this is a player because we verified it right here. Hopefully guys, that makes sense so far. Any questions, pop them below. I'll try to get back to as soon as possible. Make sure to hit the subscribe button, please. I'm spending a lot of time here making this amazing crawling plugin. Let's go and let's test it out. Now in the game, let me type in crawl. There we go. And I'm crawling, amazing. Let me try going into Another block. Let me try going to the famous sapling right here that's been here forever. I think this map is like three years old. And even when we go down into lava, oh my goodness, we died again. But after we respawn, we can simply crawl again. Let me try this in here, right here. There we go. You can see that there is a slight visual artifact when we're moving down. Yeah, just a bit. Unfortunately, that can't be fixed. However, what you can do, you can check if the barrier is moving properly, which it is, and it's beautiful. As I promised you, this one event right here called player movement is a bit heavy on performance because it's been called thousands of times when I'm simply doing this and I'm not even moving, right? That is why we have this check right here to reduce the amount of calls. Another way to even further reduce the amount of calls is to simply use a bucket runnable. I'm not going to cover this in this video because we have a video about timed tasks inside this very YouTube tutorial series. I'm feeling that I'm repeating myself 15th time. So I check, I recommend you check that video. And then all you're going to do is you're going to have, I'm just going to give you a basic demo. This is going to be your task. Okay. 
and this will implement run enable. And inside the run method, you're simply going to iterate for all the players right here. And then we're simply going to be taking, we're simply going to be calling uh, basically this one, right? We're going to be wanting to call it. Just like this one, you can delete the from to and you can simply call crawl that update. This one is going to be uh, the player's current location and you don't have to clone it because Beckett clones that call automatically. Now, of course, you can even further reduce this by storing the odd location somewhere inside the map right here, but this is going to get a bit too complicated. I don't have to deal with this. Uh, if you're smart, you'll figure it out. If you're not so smart, obviously you'll become smart by watching my free YouTube tutorial series and taking my online classes to which the link is in the description, then you'll be able to figure out with ease. However, just doing this trick will reduce the lag to a very, very minimum level. Now, of course, make sure to go inside your main class right here and then simply call get scheduler on the server run task timer right here. You don't have to have an instance or you can, it doesn't matter. And then the period is probably good to be pretty low, such as two or even one. However, the lower, the bigger the input performance impact, as you know. However, this is still less than having the on move event. I'm just going to delete this class and this is it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it again. If you want to learn more crazy tutorials, tutorials like this one, check out the course called Project Orion. It's my personal masterpiece. We did it last year, took me over half a year to build, contains hundreds and hundreds of lessons about Minecraft, Bungie Cord, Spigot, NMS packets, you name it, GUI minigames, anti-cheats, and of course it has me personally helping you guys out on something called live Q&A calls in addition to all of these pre-recorded lessons, you have me sitting twice per week with you, giving you personalized help and answering any questions live. And you can even share your screen and speak with me if you want to, if you dare to. That's it for this video. Again, subscribe to this channel for more cool stuff like this. It really motivates me and keeps me going. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.